Hi everyone and welcome to another video. In this video I will check the difference between a premium and a budget RX 7900 XTX offering and see what sets these apart. I hope this video will help anyone to make a better decision when choosing to buy one of these cards. I will be checking the Gigabyte of Rust Elite, this being the premium card, and the Sapphire Pulse as the budget one. The premium offering from Sapphire is the Nitro Plus version that uses a vape and chubwell cooler, while when it comes to Gigabyte, the budget option is called the Gaming OC that usually sits close to the Sapphire Pulse price-wise. The premium cards offer better cooling solution, higher clock speeds and the increased power limit over the budget ones. Some of the budget options offer a small overclock over the AMD reference cards, come with a bit better cooling solution and have a small increase when it comes to the power limit. These usually sit at the same price point as the reference cards, but this may be dependent on the region and availability. Now I'm gonna show the tune settings used for both cards. I've increased the power limit to 15%, tweaked to be the minimum and maximum frequency clocks and set a custom fan curve. I'm gonna show just a few benchmark runs and after move to the comparison table to see the performance in 12 games. On the screen the Hogwarts Legacy run was done using the Pulse card. As it can be seen, the car sits at max power in this game. The performance when it comes to the 1% lows is the same, but the premium card has a bit better averages at 66.6 frames per second, while the budget card manages 63.3. This translates to around 5% performance difference between the two cards. When checking the Last of Us Part 1, we can see that there isn't a trend as the two cards perform the same, both sitting at around 116 frames per second when it comes to the averages and 98 when it comes to the 1% lows. As you can be seen on the screen, in this section, the budget card sits below the max power limit, increasing bit by bit until a certain value. Let's now check the benchmark table for the 12 games and see how many games fit in the latter situation. When looking at the Guardians of the Galaxy, the Pulse performed a bit better, achieving averages of 99.3 frames per second with 1% lows of 77.4, where the Aorus Elite version has around an average of 97.2 and 1% lows of 76.9. The premium card performed a bit worse because I had a bit of stuttering in one of the free runs. I wanted to point it out as this affects the overall results. Basically, in this game, the cards perform the same and the game sits below the power limit of the Pulse card. This is the second game from free where the two cards are neck and neck. Let's now look at other games and see if this is the pattern. When checking Resident Evil 4 Remake, the cards are basically tiled, averages of 153 frames and 1% lows of 130. As we already saw, in Hogwarts Legacy, the Oros Elite car delivered a bit more frames, achieving 66.8, with the Pulse sitting around 63.3, but both had the same 1% lows of 33 frames. Moving on to the internal benchmark in the Callisto Protocol, both cars deliver similar results, with averages of 231 frames and 1% lows of 93. In the Jedi Survivor, the same pattern emerges, with averages of 87.7, but with a bit better 1% lows for the Pulse card, delivering 44.6 frames, compared to the Aorus Elite's 42.6. Nothing has changed when checking a Plague Steel, with averages sitting around 78 frames and 1% lows of 49 for both cards. Ok, so the game that I checked so far, the performance difference can be attributed to margin of error. Let's move to the last batch of games and see if there is really a pattern. Looking at the Hitman 3 internal benchmark, again the difference can be attributed to margin of error, with the Oro Elite delivering 109.8 and 1% lows of 64.2 frames, with the Pulse delivering averages of 110.5 and 64.6. In Gotham Knights, the cards are tied, with averages of 162 frames and 1% lows of 118. Moving on to Returnal, when using the internal benchmark, both cards are again tied at 99 frames and 71 when it comes to 1% lows. In control, we can see the Aorus Elite pulling a bit ahead, achieving averages of 101.4 and 1% lows of 88.8 frames, while the Pulse delivers 98.7 averages and 86.1 1% lows. The Pulse is behind by 3%. In the last game that I checked, this space, again the cards are basically tied, with averages around 158 frames and 1% lows as low as 61 due to the stuttering in the game. There seems to be a pattern here, but let's look at the overall results. When looking at the averages in World 12 games, we can see that the premium card, the Horus Elite, barely pulled ahead of the pools, averaging 121.64 against 121.26 and 1% 1 lows of 77.4 compared to 77.34. 
When looking at the prices, the Pulse sits around 1000 euros in one store here in Spain, while the Aorus Elite sits at around 1200, which is in another store, but there were on offer in the beginning of July at 1070 euros. Now, let's check the temperature for both cards while gaming. This is the custom fan curve that I used in the Bench of France. I used the custom fan curve to achieve low hotspot temperatures. Let's see the temps in control for both cards while gaming. The thermals that are displayed by MSI Afterburner are after a playthrough of 10 minutes. The Oros Elite, being a bigger card and having a vapor chamber cooler solution, has better thermals and is silent. I'm zooming in the video to show the actual in-game thermals. The Oros Elite leads the pulse here with a lower hotspot temperature of 78 degrees Celsius while the fans spin at around 61% compared to the pulse car that hovers at 82 degrees with fan speed around 70%. When checking the in-game clock speeds and the power usage, we see that these go hand in hand. The Aorus Elite maintains in this game a clock speed of around 2730 MHz while sipping up above 460 watts, while the Pulse card hovers around 2550 MHz with power usage around 410 but occasionally creeps up to above 420. As we just saw, the premium card, being bigger and having an increased power limit, can have minor benefits like performing a bit better in some games while being a bit cooler and quieter. The Aorus card also has RGB as the pulse lacks any lighting at all. It offers also 4 years of warranty if you register it online. What I'll show next is the power spike that I managed to record. The Aorus Elite card can go up to around 550 watts for a split moment, while the Sapphire Pulse jumped to almost 500 watts. I didn't manage to record the Pulse card while hitting that value though. If choosing one of these cards, make sure to take into account spikes like this, as this can trigger some safety measure on the PSU side if it is a low power one. If you don't increase the power limit, most likely a good 650 watt PSU will be ok, but this depends a lot on the CPU, as Intel CPUs tend to consume a lot more. So, to sum up everything, the Pulse performs well, it sits close to Aorus Elite when the game doesn't push the card to its power limit. When that happens, it will usually lose, as, in order to stay below that power limit, it will reduce clock speeds. Thermals are good, but using a custom fan curve when increasing the power limit is recommended. At least this was my case, as I want to keep the hotspot temperature below 90 degrees Celsius. I believe that this is a great card, but has a minor drawback. Being a bit smaller, the fans are a bit loud at high speeds. I can start hearing fan noise when above 60%, but it doesn't bother me that much. When above 75%, the fans are starting to get loud and bother me. I adjusted the fan curve to maximum speeds of 65% and never saw the card going close to 90 degrees Celsius, usually it sits around 86, and this is not open bench thermals. When it comes to coil wine, both cards don't have it. It only happened once when the menu of Callister Protocol, but after I didn't hear it anymore. I'm not sure why, as this was a one-off situation. This happened as well with my 4080. What I liked the most about the Pulse was its compact size and good performance, given its pricing. Also, the card is closer in price to a 4070 Ti in Spain than a 4080. But what about the Aorus Elite? Well, if you're in a search for a premium RX 7900 XTX, you can consider this one as well. It is cool and quiet, has great RGB and can be overclocked to a greater extent than any budget 7900 XTX as it has a higher power ceiling. You guys can decide if this is worth the extra amount that a more premium offering mandates. And that is it for this video. Please subscribe to the channel to help it grow, hit the like button if you think that this video was helpful and drop a comment below to help with the YouTube algorithm. Hope to see you all in the next one.